Welcome, everyone, to the Tuesday, October 26th edition of Black Professionals Month. Remember, it's more than a month. It's a movement. We are here to celebrate Black professional excellence, connect, convene, so that we can come together to build a trusted online community where we're connecting, collaborating, and working together to generate sustained wealth and enhance the roles of the leadership of Black professionals worldwide. As we do every time, we always start out with a welcome from our honorary chair, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. So let's go and let's make it happen. Hello. I'm happy to report that Denise Kegler and Jerome Hutchison have been hard at work to move the needle in both corporate America and the Black community. And the vehicle? Well, it's Black Professionals Month. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, and welcome to my classroom. Whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, or corporate climber for the month of October 2021, Black Professionals Month is for you. For 31 days, we'll take a deep dive into virtual programs, leadership training, professional development, and of course, some much needed entertainment, all in an effort to get you to step up and stand out. So make sure you go online and register at www.blackprofessionalsmonth.com. And for 31 days in the month of October, I will see you virtually. Take care and God bless. Hi, this is my new business partner, Denise. And this is my new business partner, Hutch. And between the two of us, we have over 60 years of professional experience, which includes... Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Communications Officer, Published Author, and Co-Founder of Black Professionals Month. TV Station Founder, Radio Sales Executive, and Chief Circuit Officer, as well as Co-Founder of Black Professionals Month. Oh my goodness, Hutch is coming in October. Are we going to be ready? We've been preparing for this all our lives. We will be ready. Visit blackprofessionalsmonth.com. See you there. Are you as fired up as we are about the lack of Black corporate leadership worldwide? If so, then let's do something about it. Let's be the change we need to see. Learn more at BlackProfessionalsMonth.com. Well, all right. I know that you're fired up and you're ready to go. And I'm going to do something now um, for the first time. that This is a worldwide declaration. And so there's a guy that years ago played a really mean saxophone and everybody thought that he was pretty cool and he became if you will the first black president of the united states of america so some of you know what i'm talking about some of you may be wondering like what is he talking about and i'm not talking about barack obama either and uh, anybody know what that guy's name was go ahead and shout it out bill clinton all right there we go so i know i'm talking to an informed audience here so I have the official Chitlin card that I am bestowing upon my good friend, Dan Gretsch, because of his support of black businesses. You're an honorary black man, Dan Gretsch, during Black Professionals Month. And if you keep doing the right thing, we're gonna make it not just a month, but we're gonna make it a lifetime. How about that? So I wanna introduce uh, the rest of the crew from this Hack Black Alumni Panel. They are here today to really support black owned businesses. And um, the goal for them today is to really look at the transformative impact of digital marketing on black owned businesses. And digital marketing is, is really such a phenomenal tool. It's almost like when before you didn't have the ability to communicate with the world because you had to either go through some uh, TV station or some other means of communication, that just basically was out of reach. But today, if you've got a message, if it's relevant, it has value, you can get on the internet and find some folks who wanna hear from you, who wanna engage with you. Well, that's what digital marketing is as it relates to black owned businesses. We now have the opportunity to tap into markets they're here before, we're out of our reach and beyond our grasp. And when you get trained by the folks at BizHack Academy, you're gonna be able to take advantage of those opportunities and transform your business. And that's what we're here to talk to about today. So we've got four panelists and we also have Janine who's gonna moderate. And uh, we've got Todd Billings from Close Mortgage. 
Biz Hack Academy Black Alumni Panel. Also, Curling Jules from the Jules Management Group. Shakira Johnson, and also Ricardo Barris. And uh, I think I, I realized that I just kind of made a mistake here, Ricardo. I'm sorry, I looked like I brought the wrong card down, but I'll introduce Ricardo from the MI Group of Companies. And part of the MI Group is the MI Group uh, Digital Marketing uh, Firm. And not only is he a Biz Hack alumni, but he's also a, a big ha Biz Hack coach. And he was my coach when I went through Biz Hack. And so we're just really excited to have the uh, BizHack team here. So without any further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce and present the BizHack alumni panel to talk about the transformative impact of digital marketing on Black-owned businesses. And the next sound that you hear will be from somebody from the BizHack Black alumni panel, and I suspect it will be Janine. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, thank you, Hutch. Uh, you know, I, I'll actually be doing a quick introduction, but boy, that was, uh, that was about the most generous introduction I've ever received in my life. Truly, I am honored to be the first black white guy uh, that is part of the ICABA network. But, you know, I'm so honored, frankly, to be a supporter of ICABA uh, and a supporter of Black Professionals Month. And you and Denise uh, are both BizHack alumni. Did you guys happen to meet through uh, Biz Hacker, did you know each other before then? Um, I, she met me prior to going through Biz Hack, but I had already been through. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's it's so amazing to to be facilitating and and and, and enabling those kinds of communities that we have here. And I uh, I did want to just share a, a couple quickly uh, quick uh, ideas about what today's panel is about before introducing our extraordinary moderator. Uh, Janine Williamson, uh, formerly of NPR and The Atlantic. So our core purpose is a business. The, the reason I wake up every day uh, is to give you entrepreneurs a simpler way to grow so you can transform your businesses and your careers. And we know that Black-owned businesses face inequitable structures and institutions that hinder your progress. And that in order for you to begin to overcome that, obviously we need structural and institutional change, but we also need black owned business owners to share amongst one another best practices with one another uh, to at least help give yourselves a leg up in this inequitable situation. And in today's panel, we're gonna do experience sharing where you'll learn about the impact that BizHack and its digital marketing trading has made on black owned businesses. You're gonna get concrete tips in how they're overcoming some of the marketing challenges that every business faces. And the, they're gonna give you some concrete advice on digital marketing. Uh, one quick correction, Ricardo Barris, who's one of the panelists, never actually took the program. He actually knows more about marketing than I ever will, uh, but he is one of the lead instructors and an incredible partner and friend of BizHacks. Uh, everyone else on the panel uh, is an alumnus of the program, like Denise, like Hutch, and like Frederica Walker from Apple Dumpling Solutions. It's really important to me to give voice to the Black-owned businesses themselves talking about how digital marketing has transformed their businesses. So I have a selection uh, of quotes that I'm going to share with you uh, over the next few minutes uh, from them talking about digital marketing. Frederica said, if you're a business owner and are serious about growing your business, you must show up and be committed to it. You must also make investing in yourself as well as your business a priority to see true success investing in yourself. That's really what we're about. We believe in investing in business owners, investing in themselves. That's never been uh, a bad investment. Um, today, we're going to have the ICAB introduction, some welcome remarks, and then we're going to uh, move it over to Janine. Uh, you've already heard the panelists, Ricardo Barris, Shakira Johnson, Todd Billings, and Kerleen Jules. And we're going to have a wonderful conversation and uh, Q&A. Gina Alexis, another Black-owned business owner from BizHack said, Thank you, BizHack, for this opportunity. While I expected to learn a lot, I also didn't expect to feel the bond I felt. Uh, for the instructors, they were awesome. We're all about building community. Um, I did want to share um, for, sorry, um, I, I have a little video that I wanted to share. Um, I want to make sure that the sharing is optimized for, um, for video. So let me just do that.
I think the most magical moment was one of the tools that we used, which was a video creation tool. And I see video ads all the time on Facebook and I'm like, gosh, I wish we had a marketing budget or a campaign budget to hire somebody to do videos. I learned how to do them on my own and to create an ad with them. I mean, people thought that I had paid somebody to do them and the way that it, they performed was amazing. There were times that I was frustrated or things were just not going my way. Uh, they literally would pull me to the side and say, how can we help you? What are some things that we can do different to make sure that your experience is the one that you really anticipate and one that you really need? Get in there, Dan and the team are amazing. They really care about you and your business and they truly wanna see every single person in this course be successful. Uh, Brenda Kwateng uh, from ISCS Global uh, also talked about opening the eye, her eyes to the power of digital marketing, which is essential to growing her business, including how to create a video, just like what Kimba was talking about. This is a great investment in you and your business, and these skills are invaluable. And these are the Black-owned businesses. We've had more than 40 businesses that have gone through our program, uh, more than we can name, uh, but I wanted to share with you uh, the incredible Black-owned businesses that have been through our program, several of whom are represented here today on the panel discussion. Uh, and, and it is really, truly an honor to have worked with all of you uh, through this program and through your growth uh, as entrepreneurs and business owners. Grant McGaw uh, from Five Star BDM, uh, another great ICABA member, so, talked about how he learned the core foundations of social media and digital marketing, I now know how to optimize my website with SEO content and layout to work in conjunction with video ads, ads to drive brand awareness. These are our panelists. Um, and finally, I wanted to share one more quick uh, quote from Christina Francois of the Office of New Americans in Miami Dade. With BizHack's program, I've been able to learn so much and drastically change my approach to digital strategy. Consistency is key. So we've touched a lot of lives and we're gonna actually talk now about some specific lives that we've touched with the four great panelists. I'm very honored to welcome moderator Janine Williamson. Janine is the founder of JLW Consulting, which is a firm that helps organizations apply DEIB to everything they say and do. She worked for nine years at NPR and two years at The Atlantic, two top nonprofits and media organizations. And she spent her entire career, more than 15 years, helping public media and nonprofits reach new and diverse audiences through strategic communications and digital strategy. Now on her own with JLW Consulting, she helps organizations communicate how their missions are essential to fighting inequity, supporting democracy and driving change in their communities. And she's passionate about what we're doing here today, facilitating dialogue, gathering input and research and sharing measurable insights to create actionable plans for long-term impact and success. It, it is a true honor, Janine, to welcome you uh, as our moderator and, and as a part of the BizHack family. And we look forward to a long and fruitful relationship together, Janine. Thank you so much, Dan, for that wonderful introduction. I'm so grateful. It has been uh, an, a very fruitful experience for me uh, to join this family and to learn from you and your team and all of the great people that I've met through your program. I'm excited to be here with you all today to moderate this conversation. I'm excited to learn from our wonderful panelists today, and I'd love for us to just dive right in. Um, if we can start, uh, with uh, some introductions, I would love for everyone to uh, share a little bit about yourself, uh, your business, uh, why you do um, what you do, and what it is that you think about um, supporting and participating in Black Professionals Month. Um, and well, let's start there. So if we can have the first panelist, I would love to hear from you. Um, and then if you can also just uh, announce who you'd like to pass it to afterwards. So if we can start with Ricardo Barris. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for, uh, for having me. And uh, um, hello to Dan and, and Hutch and Denise for um, putting this together. And I see many faces that I'm familiar with. Um, I think all of you, we have uh, perhaps met um, at some point or the other, but 
if we haven't. Um, I'm Ricardo uh, Beris. I, I'm a part of the coaching team with uh, BizHack, and hence um, the reason I'm also here to share, um, you know, what I what that actually means to me as a Black business owner. Uh, I started my first business when I was 20, and um, it really came from a problem I had with my brother because uh, he didn't like math as much as I got paid to do it, and then we had to kind of figure out a solution. But uh, discovering that hundreds of other boys just like him was struggling with the subject, and uh, that led me to starting my own tutored boutique, um, scale it to three locations and then sort of left that and got into tech. Um, and, you know, as a black uh, individual, access to a lot of the opportunities that you'll see out there can be extremely difficult. Um, and that was 20 years ago. And uh, you would think that things would have evolved in a much faster way, um, but it hasn't. And today, uh, black businesses still struggle um, Today, I still see myself struggling as a black black business owner uh, to really help uh, others. And it becomes a little difficult to pay it forward. It becomes a little challenging to immerse oneself into the community uh, when you have to deal with those kinds of stuff. So I think this means a lot for, for me as a black business owner. It, it means a lot for, uh, for the community that we can come together to talk about these things and to talk about the impact. I run a technology and marketing firm today that works with um, small businesses. And for the most part, uh, almost all of those businesses that I, that I serve are black owned businesses as well. And I'm very passionate about helping them uh, to succeed. Um, I've been blessed to have business in South America and as well as in the Caribbean, but it's easy to say that. It's very hard to do, however. And um, I think conversations like these uh, really help uh, to point us in the right kind of direction. I'm a learn it all, so I don't think I know anything about business. So I depend on conversation from the community like this one uh, that is really elevating uh, how we as Black business owners can attain a semblance of success and and get to the next level, right? There's a lot of other folks who are actually doing it, but uh, sometimes you do feel like uh, we've been sort of singled out to a corner that says, this is the corner, this is the fail corner. And we say, enough of that, that's not going to work for our community. And in order for us to change that, we have to change our mindset, but it has to be done together. So my name is Ricardo, and um, that's essentially what, uh, what I do. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Thank you for, you said so many great things in there and I look forward to us continuing uh, a lot of those threads you just mentioned. We'll pass it to Shakira Johnson to introduce. Well, thank you for that. And, and hello everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, my journey started um, with this hack early 2020 when Dan actually reached out to me to tell me about the this have course that they had. And um, as many of us, I was a little apprehensive to take it at the time due to the financing of it. Um, and the reason being is it was right when the pandemic was starting and I just wasn't sure how things were going to actually flush out just with um, finances, the economy, all those things. And then Dan actually came back to me and he said, well, we, we have a scholarship that we're able to offer you as being a woman of color. And it allowed me through taking that scholarship to take the course and not only take the course, but to actually win the Biz Hacker Award at the end of that course. And most importantly, meet um, a, a great, awesome group of, of um, um, colleagues in, in that course, including Hutch I was in with, um, Ricardo was actually my um, one of my coaches as well as Carlene, she was um, one of the um, my other colleagues in it. So it was great and it allowed me to really understand this concept of making money in your sleep that, that we hear on the internet, right? Which for um, the black community has been a tool to really increase our wealth and increase our success. And when I talk about success, I really think about freedom. So I have multiple businesses. My 
business that I work with clients and that I've had the longest is JPR and events where we focus on strategic communication, also social impact and producing memorable events. And that business, um, while I love it, especially the impact that we're able to create in the community, um, it is laborious in terms of time, right? And I mm -hmm. wanted to have um, other revenue streams that allowed me to really capitalize off of the automation and AI that we have available to us that we didn't necessarily have at our fingertips now. And BizHack, that's where they helped me. They helped me to learn how to take my brand that I have, which is Love by OMG. This is our signature sweatshirt that I have here and say, how can we run ads and how can we automate our Shopify site and all those things so that I could in essence make money while I sleep, right? So once we run those ads and once we run and, and get our site and everything set up, it's able to be automated where everything can just run um, really from my fingertips on my phone and generate revenue. So um, that's why I'm here today, happy again to be here and um, look forward to the rest of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh gosh, so many good things there as well. Um, thinking about automation and how it can lead to freedom. Um, what a great, great one to um, continue to build on. Todd, we'd love to hear from you. Welcome. Hi, great to be here. Um, at my journey started in South Central Los Angeles and you know, from there was fortunate to get a scholarship to Stanford University and then worked on Wall Street um, in investment banking and trading. Uh, one of these guys yelling and screaming uh, on, on the stock exchange floor. And um, that ultimately led into a career of managing money most of my, uh, my life. And my core business has been USDB Capital. Along the way, I also have a mortgage company, Closed Mortgage. And then my wife and I it started a business called uh, Sweet Rustic Bake Shop, which is a bakery business. Um, you know, the thing that I would say um, as to why it's so important to have these types of meetings um, and to have this community is access. And I, I believe, you know, it's access to information, it's access to capital, it's access to people, whether that's a, through a community or just individual networking. Um, because growing up, uh, I just think my access to people was really the Cosby show. It was like, I should be a doctor or lawyer. I originally went to Johns Hopkins to become pre-med and always wanted to work on Wall Street and had transferred to Stanford. And, and I think, you know, the key um, for these meetings is access. And two great uh, components of that access has been um, ICABA. Um, if it wasn't for Hutch and Icaba, I never would have met uh, Dan and BizHack Academy. And so, you know, BizHack has been instrumental in my wife and I's bakery business because she didn't, it was a startup. She didn't have money to hire a marketing company. And so I took on that job as uh, head of marketing and, and uh, advertising and, and just through learning uh, and having access to the people and the mentors and teachers at BizHack. Um, I was able to generate ads that really um, made my wife say, turn them off. So um, I think it's a, it's a great, um, a great uh, community here, a great place where we can learn how to grow our business. Because as we all know, going through the pandemic um, has been a challenge for every business owner. Um, and, you know, having um, a tool to say, how can I do what is typically the hardest part of any business, which is get new customers, get new clients. How can I do that? This act really provided that, um, that platform to reach those people through social media and through marketing online. So um, I'm happy to be here and happy to share as much as I can to help any one of you. Thank you so much. Access is key. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Denise, we'd love to hear from you. Hello. Oh, hello. Um, first of all, thank you all for, for being here. It is fabulous to, to see you and to reconnect with BizHack, with Dan and my coach, Ricardo, who is fantastic. I, I do want to echo what was said in the video and then what a couple of you have said. The video I sent 
a note saying I could totally relate to her because I knew nothing about creating ads and, and didn't understand how simple, and simple might be a little bit too simple because it still takes work, but it felt so good to actually be able to learn how to create Facebook ads, which I had not done prior to joining um, BizHack. And I too was the BizHack or won the BizHacker Award. That was it, Dan, right? The BizHacker Award. Yes, yes, yes. So Shakira, I could totally relate um, when you said that. That was awesome. And I was so surprised when I won, but I shouldn't have been because I had the best coach, which was Ricardo. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I have a small black owned business, um, MDK Brand Management. I was able to run ads and, and increase my digital presence, my digital um, platform uh, identity, uh, thanks to what I learned from BizHack and continuing to do that, to build on my company, to continue to expand my services to more online offerings than I, than I was doing prior to going through the BizHack course. So I am a huge fan of BizHack, a huge fan of what we can learn from BizHack. And, and probably the last thing I'll say is we're never too old to, to learn. I, I, you know, I mean, it might seem daunting and it is daunting when you look, especially when I started the program with Dan and his team and, and Lillian and the other folks on the, on the team and go and looking at everything we were going to learn through the course. And I thought, oh my gosh, there's no way I'm going to be able to learn this and follow all of this. But the way the course is structured and the way the, the coaches really make us feel that we can do it. You know, don't, don't feel like you're going to get lost in all this because we're going to be by your side to learn everything and to, to help you recognize that, yeah, you can do it. And so that was the biggest takeaway is, is, is realizing that, yeah, I can do it. And in the class, the other small business owners I went through BizHack with, we were all supportive of one another. We still keep in touch, which is great. So there is this network of small business owners that I didn't have. I mean, I had a network, but not as broad as the one I have now, thanks to BizHack. And so I thank you. I also got a scholarship. So thank you, Dan, for, for that as well. Like a couple others mentioned, I think Shakira, you mentioned as well. Was it Shakira? Yeah, you got a scholarship as well. And so, yeah, exactly. We have a lot in common, Shakira. That's so funny. It's so awesome. Um, I love but, it. We're um, like twins. I know. I know. Well, they say everyone has one. <laughs> So I will a lot of commonality. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I will leave it there. And of course, as a co-founder of Black Professionals Month, I'm just thrilled to to be able to to uh, be part of this platform and have BizHack take part of this. And BizHack, of course, is a sponsor of Black Professionals Month. So I thank Dan for that as well. So good to see you all, and thanks again for being here. Thank you so much. Carlene, we'd love to hear from you. Welcome and tell us a little bit about your business and uh, why you're here today. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Carlene Jules. I own a Black-owned, women-led boutique branding and digital marketing agency, primarily working with women of color, small business owners, as well as mission-focused nonprofits. Uh, we help them to establish their brand identity so that they can also amplify their digital footprint so they can spread their message in transforming the world. Um, so I'm actually celebrating five years in business. So five years ago, I made the big jump into entrepreneurship. It was celebrated September 28th. I still remember the date. <laughs> um, my journey into BizHack, I was introduced to it by Icaba. Um, Jerome presented the opportunity. It was at the time my biggest investment into a training program. So I too was very apprehensive in spending the money but I can truly say that it was money spent, well spent. Um, because of BizHack, uh, my accountant was running my books. I have a five-figure training number <laughs> right now uh, because the information that I learned from BizHack just kind of created this like amazing thirst of knowledge that I wanted to continue learning. And so I invested in different programs after BizHack um, because I truly believe that investing in yourself is important. Um, and I believe in you have to pay to play. So doing the BizHack program was an amazing investment. It gave me the confidence that I need to run my business. Um, an interesting fact about me is that I didn't go to school for marketing. I went to school for information systems and, and finance. That was the bulk of my corporate career. It was through my volunteer work that it was brought to my attention that I have an innate gift in marketing. And so I decided to study and learn on my own, but I never was fully confident in it. And I think BizHack, uh, the BizHack program gave me the confidence that I need to to run my business. So I think it's definitely worth the investment. 
I'm a little jealous that everybody had my coach. I didn't know Ricardo coached everybody. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> thought it was only me. Uh, but Ricardo was also my coach. He's a beast at what he does. And so it was an honor to, to work with them. And it's cool to see some of my cohorts who were in my class. So that's pretty much me. Thank you so much. All of you have really touched on how BizHack um, transformed your business, transformed how you saw coming into the market yourself. I wonder if we can talk a little bit more about um, what part of digital and marketing really helped you grow your business. What was, was there a specific tactic or a specific thing that you learned through the course and through your work with BizHack and the team that you felt really just kind of shot you off um, to the next level? I'll jump in here. Um, I would say, you know, the there were so many things that we learned uh, about digital marketing. Um, I think number one is you have to identify your who, right? Who's your target audience? And and um, and I think you know the tools that are given, especially with Facebook and things like that, you can really start to even if you don't know your who, you can put out advertisements that will allow people to start raising their hands and and identifies your who. And so I think that was, you know, a, a really big step in terms of just utilizing um, information to identify who that uh, target market is. I'd say the, the thing that was most impactful at the end of the day was um, just realizing the importance of developing and creating an irresistible offer. Um, I think many times when we're doing advertising, we are thinking about having a specific sale or return on um, that particular um, investment of that dollar versus the, the lifetime value of that client. And so when you start to put, the, put it into perspective, it allows you to say, you know what, I need to create, in, in my case, we created an offer that was literally 50% off um, anything in our store. Um, for first time customers, which my wife looked at me like, are you crazy? You're giving stuff away. But once I explained the concept and said, hey, every customer is worth this amount to us, a loyalty customer comes in twice a month and spends an average of $20. So yes, maybe we gave someone, you know, $10, $20 off of an order. But at the same time, we gained a customer that potentially will patronize our business over the next year, two years, three years or more for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And so putting that into perspective into a formula became really, I'd say, the game changer for me. And more importantly, I'd say even for my wife, who's the founder of the business, to understand, hey, the value of creating an offer that makes people come in, even if you lose money on the initial sale, it could uh, turn out to be extremely profitable long term. So That's great. Thank you, Todd. I would add to that in terms of one of the things you learn is that the power of the long game, right? So everything seems so instant, you know, like people tell these stories of I did this and I made five figures, six figures, seven figures. But this hack really helps you to put that in perspective in terms of, you know, one that may not be true. And then two, just the power of the long game. So just running one ad may not necessarily yield you the results that you want, probably not even, right? So it's all about a series of ads and, and using time to your benefit to test and measure. Um, so that was one of the other things is just the, the power of time. Um, also for me as an agency owner and not having any experience um, in running ads um, beyond boosting a post, which you learn is not an ad, um, it allowed me to have better conversations with my director of digital in terms of the ads that we're running, the things that we're doing for our clients, um, just in terms of being able to um, have a better understanding of that and be able to talk. And, and even when I'm pitching clients, have a better understanding that I can speak to. And also when I'm working internally with my team, having the knowledge to say, well, are we doing this? Are we doing that? As opposed to really it being totally out of wheelhouse, not knowing anything and just allowing them to, you know, run it and me not have the proper questions or even insight to manage it properly. That's great. I love the way that you're talking about not only gaining that knowledge for yourself, but bringing it back to your team and also bringing it to your clients. 
So now you're taking everything that you're learning um, through your experience here with this hack, and you're able to channel that into sharing that education, not only with the team that you have, but also to help the clients. That's amazing. Thank you mm. for sharing that. I'd like to just add one other thing, too. Uh, it was helpful to um, see what was possible. Sometimes we get so close. And, and just as an example, I remember, and Dan and, and Carter might remember this, and Lily, I was so frustrated at one point in the process. And I remember sending an email saying, I'm so frustrated. And Ricardo was like, okay, Denise, what's going on? And I was saying, I don't know what to do. We were talking about what product we were going to advertise in our Facebook campaign. And I have, my company has three levels of service. I'm a business, cons business consultant, I'm a brand strategist, but I also have co online coaching programs. And none of that felt comfortable or felt right to advertise in Facebook. And Ricardo said to me, but Denise, you wrote a book. And I said, yeah, I did. He goes, hello, <laughs> do an ad on your book. <laughs> and it just never, I guess I was just so close to it that I just didn't take a step back and see, wow, Ricardo, what a, what a great idea. Because I have this book that I wrote, $40 and a brand. And it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, but it never occurred to me to do an ad on it. And so yeah. with Ricardo's help, we wrote the ad copy and I ran an ad on it. And, uh, and it's great to go to my mailbox and get a check, a royalty check from my publisher because the book is sell. I mean, it, you know, it's selling thanks to Ricardo. So, you know, it's just been great. So the, the, I guess my point is with the help of Ricardo, I was able to take a step back and not get yeah. you know so close that I wasn't seeing the obvious. And Ricardo and, and the team and Dan helped me do that. So thank you. It's great to have that ability to count on a team to really give you that perspective. Um, as business owners, sometimes, you know, you're like you said, you're so deep in it that um, some of those things that people might have been doing for a long time. <laughs> Um, isn't something that you see oh, yeah, and awesome. having someone like Ricardo or, or Dan and the team there um, can really change and bring that perspective. Carlene, I'm curious to know um, how that has impacted your business as well. So I would say for me, it, it may sound simple, but one of the big things that you learn quickly is that you don't need a massive budget. I think a lot of times when we think about advertising and marketing, you think you need a Coca-Cola budget, like millions of dollars. And so you're able to see very quickly that you just need a small fraction. I think I spent maybe $50 for, for my ad. I know um, because of the, the training that I got, I also manage my church ads as well as my clients. They normally have smaller budgets. And so we're able to do great things even with a $300 a month budget. Um, and so you realize quickly that, again, you don't, you can just start small. And if the ad is performing well, all you have to do is just scale it up. So I know for my sorority, we have a cooking, virtual cooking event that's happening, I think, in two weeks. I was able to convince them to allocate ad budget um, because changing organization cultures that don't spend money in advertising used to get stuff for free is a challenge. So I was like, I'm going to show them a win, a small win, and we can just scale the ad up. And the ad is performing extremely well. We're already halfway through their goals. We're being introduced to a whole new different audience. Um, and so we're being able to reach a, a higher reach. So that's amazing. I want, you know, one of the things that I've always been passionate about is um, explaining the possibility um, that digital and, and marketing can bring to a business, to an organization, to a mission to an impact, um, and it's so great to hear you say that. You don't need a huge budget, um, but you do need to have the understanding of how to use these platforms. I'm, quick, I'm curious, Ricardo, if you can add um, a little bit to, you know, as the coach here that's coached many of our, our panelists, um, what is the thing that you feel like you want people to take away the most when you're coaching someone about digital marketing? Well, there are a couple of things that come to mind, and I, I think everybody hit the nail on the head uh, in terms of their own experience. And at some point, the more people we have going through this experience of digital marketing, there's going to be a common denominator of that single line of experience that we all sort of can relate to, right? Um, but, you know, we have to keep in mind that digital marketing wasn't here. It wasn't here 20 years ago. Um, and what was here were the expensive stuff, the billboards, the TV ads, and people got really great at getting you placement into the papers and, and posters and all these different things. I mean, we still remember days where we, were, we used to hand out flyers on the street corners, right? 
Um, and, and today that has changed drastically. So there's a democratization of uh, marketing and thanks to technology that allowed that to happen, right? Um, and, you know, Steve Jobs, he always says this is a common stuff that we know. The only way you can kind of predict what's going to happen is to kind of plot, the, you know, connect the dots from, from the past, right? Um, but we are still suffering from a lack of knowledge in the Black community as it relates to digital marketing. People are still afraid of the computers and people are still afraid of the technology, and this is where you have to lean into to embrace things like digital marketing for your business, right? Um, and so the future of digital marketing for Black-owned businesses is it's very bright, uh, but we have to connect the bridge. We have to be the bridge between where they're at right now and where they should be going. And that's really the knowledge, right? Um, and I always look at you know digital marketing as okay, it's an elephant, but how do you eat an elephant, right? You've got to take a step back and let's bite this thing up one bite at a time, right? And if you scientifically just keep biting just a little bit, just chew off a little bit, if you keep doing that, I promise you, like I bet my money on it, like you will eat that elephant. Now, I, I'm not going to tell you it's going to take two days or 10 weeks or a year, but the time is not important because you will be here 10 years from now. Like, you know, things will be here that represents you 10 years from now. So why worry about the time? Let's just focus on the science of it. Let's just take the little that we can chew and let's master that. And I think BizHack provides that opportunity. You get to see the size of the elephant, but they train you on how to take it in bite size and master it, right? When Dan created that learning, that lead building system, it was a bite-sized approach. Let's do it pillar by pillar so you understand it. So the, the message that I have for Black business owners is that, you know, yes, if you look at it the way most people look at it, like an elephant, and it's going to just scream at you and it scares you, it will not, that's not going to help you. However, if you change your mindset in the way you look at this thing, you've got to be able to take a step back and say, I can defeat this. I can conquer this, but I only need to take it one bite at a time. I love that. I love that. I'm going to write that down somewhere. <laughs> I think oftentimes when um, thinking about uh, big things, people get overwhelmed and I remember uh, Denise mentioned this earlier that even taking this course, you see all of the pieces that you have to do to make it through the course and um, you get overwhelmed, but taking it one bite at a time, you really get to see the progress along the way too. You get to see how you grow and change. Um, so that's a great way to look at it. Thank you so much, Ricardo, for sharing that. I'm curious if there um, is anything that you would uh, share about overcoming 2021 and um, 2020 also um, through utilizing kind of the digital marketing things that you've learned from the program was there something that really helped you overcome the challenges of 2020 that you would share with anyone that maybe just got started um, on their journey during that time and maybe still in the thick of it uh, well I can I can speak to that because as I mentioned, Part of what my firm does is events. So we had all these events lined up for 2020. And um, I am, live in New Jersey. So New Jersey was um, very early on to put in a lot of, um, a lot of social distancing um, mandates. So very early on, New Jersey was in a state of lockdown. We weren't able to have any events at all. Um, so, you know, I was wondering, well, what is going to happen with my business here? And um, really using a lot of these techniques, we were able to bring many of them virtual, but not only just bring them virtual, but um, 10x the audience. Um, that was one of the things that some event pros found is that, okay, in-person is great, but virtual allows you even more visibility if you do it right, because um, we were having people from all over the world attend our events, um, which up until that point hadn't happened because they were in 
person and they were really just limited to who was either in the, the geographic area or who was able to fly in. Um, but through marketing and promoting the events, running ads to the events ahead of the um, event allowed for, again, us to 10X um, the attendance of these events. I mean, even one of the most dramatic is a conference that I do for my local county, a men's conference, and they typically get about 200 people to attend. Over 4,000 people attended the virtual, wow. and it was due to ads that we were running that knew about it. And when I say people from around the world, I mean, we had people in Tel Aviv, you know, attending, people from California, all over. So I would say that was a, a very practical way that we overcame people attending events, um, even having events, promoting events um, during a full-on lockdown. Well, that's a great testimony of what digital can really do for you. Thank you. Anyone else felt like there was something that they felt really helped them get through 2020 um, when it comes to utilizing digital marketing tactics? So I would say for me, for my clients on the organic side, I would say leveraging the, the lives. So the Facebook lives, mm -hmm. IG lives, YouTube lives, um, because research has shown that those uh, lives have great organic reach. And so clients were able to still reach their audience. They were able to further humanize their brand. So their clients or target audience were able to see them um, via video, though they were not able to meet in, in person. They were able to host, uh, whether it's a, a live workshop where they can empower their target audience with different um, things that they need to know about their particular service areas. And then they were able to turn those into to lead. So I think people sleep on the power of hosting lives. I know everybody doesn't like being on video. I know personally, I don't like being on video. It's something my coach is working <laughs> me on. But I've seen that those who actually leverage those lives are able to increase their organic reach tremendously. Yeah. There's something about, you know, uh, the human uh, experience and, and seeing and hearing someone's voice. I have a background in radio, but there's just something that really um, makes a difference when you can see or hear someone's story directly for, from them. Um, so I love how you brought that up, Carlene. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I know we're coming to the top of our hour here. Uh, this has been such a great conversation. It went by so quickly. I'm curious if anyone in the room has questions for our panelists or for Dan. Well, I'd like to maybe just jump in and, and share something as it relates to, you know, our topic. And um, yes. so many great things have been said about what digital marketing can do and how great um, this Hack Academy and the impact it's had in terms of spreading that knowledge and making us better equipped. But I, one of the things that I, I, I share, and as a matter of fact, um, you know, Dan, there's a woman named Tracy Lynn, who um, uh, is a very successful uh, direct marketer. Uh, matter of fact, I call her the, the Black Avon lady, if you will. Uh, but she um, uh, was asking me about, you know, digital marketing and taking a course and I've recommended to her a couple of times. And, you know, and one of the things I told her, I said, you know, you're not going to be the person that's going to be placing the buys and, and putting them together and so on and so forth. But the training and the skill and the knowledge that you get through BizHack Academy is not just about what you can do with it in terms of how you execute it and, and create marketing campaigns. It opens up your mind to the possibilities that you didn't mm -hmm. think of and the things that you can do with your business and how you can grow your business, as we just heard about, is related to, you know, being able to go global with opportunities. Um, as you heard with um, Shakira talking about how she's looking at, you know, being able to make money while she sleeps. There was a digital marketer that I met several years ago, and she did a, um, uh, a, a webinar for us. Well, it wasn't a, well I guess it was because she came off, off um, uh, on the screen offline, but it was before Zoom. <laughs> Um, but the title of the, of the uh, session was how to turn your website into your personal ATM. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the point I'm just making is that whether or not, you know, you, you're going to be the person that's going to create all of the, uh, the various entities, uh, and campaigns that you're going to try to run, 
your mind will be much greater uh, prepared to see the possibilities and create the kind of opportunities for your business utilizing digital marketing just by getting the knowledge and experience that you get from BizHack. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love the idea of also, you know, how you can pay it forward, right? So Shakira mentioned this earlier that she was able to take the course, but you know, that knowledge just didn't stay with her. Uh, she was able to share it throughout her organization, but also with other people and clients. So the power of um, taking that information and sharing it within the community, especially within uh, the black community and having that opportunity where access, as Todd mentioned earlier, might not be there for other people. Um, how do you take this information that you're learning from a course like BizHack or from an organization like BizHack and then share it out um, to other business owners? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. Anyone else have any questions? Any questions for the panelists or Dan? Is there anything else you'd like to share with the team? Well, I want to I want to make this um, you know kind of throw this out here with and for Dan because uh, we've been having this conversation definitely for a while. Um, by twenty twenty two, which is only a few months away, um, within that first quarter, you're going to probably hear. I think a um, significant announcement from BizHack and Akaba about a partnership. You know, Stephanie and um, Dan and I have had a couple of uh, conversations kind of around the edges, but there's a, a lot of things that we, I think, can do together and to really be able to take digital marketing much further into the uh, Black business and professional community to, you know, get a greater embrace and, and, and be able to uh, see it be utilized. Because, you know, when you're talking about people who don't have the budgets as Caroline was saying, you know, to match anything like a Coca-Cola and any fortune companies or anything like that. But digital marketing can allow you to have a uh, champagne taste on a beer pocketbook. And I think that uh, yeah. is a good advantage of. Great to hear. Look forward to seeing that, uh, what that announcement is. <laughs> Excited. Shakira, I noticed you uh, opened up your mic. Did you want to add something as well? No, I had it off mute by accident. I wanted to make sure that <laughs> my children in the back didn't get rowdy. We had it, a huge, we had actually a national emergency last night until this morning here. So they closed the school. So my children are here and I just want to make sure there's no ruckus in the back um, during this <laughs> slide. Uh, but what I will say, <laughs> what I will say is definitely if anyone is interested, our Teas and our great gifts are available at lovebyomg.com. They make great holiday gifts. As we all know, with these supply chain issues that are happening, you should be ordering everything fast and early um, just to make sure that you get it in enough time for the holidays. But a portion of all sales goes to support the OMG Tea Party, which is a not-for-profit organization that empowers women and girls. So definitely just inviting everybody to, of course, support women, support Black-owned business this holiday season, because this actually impacts us. It's, it's so much easier to go to Amazon and Macy's, but when you shop small, that's going to people's actual kitchen tables. That's going to to support families. So um, if it's not mine, that's fine. But just as everybody is looking to shop for the holidays, please try to, you know, shop small. Um, it really makes a difference, um, especially as we all are looking to um, shore up our, our resources as we go into 2022. Um, and, and just all the talk that we've heard about inflation, um, supply chain issues, all those things, those things will really help to make a difference in our community. So please support us this holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we can, uh, if we can all go around then, and uh, thank you very much, Kara, for sharing that. If there's anything um, you'd like to uh, end the uh, conversation with, if there's any advice that you would like to share before we end our time today, um, Todd, Perlene, uh, Ricardo, uh, Denise, any, any last things you'd like to leave with? Yeah, I think I, I think well. First of all, thank you for um, putting this together, and thanks to BPM. Uh, you know, certainly looking forward for twenty twenty two. 
uh, BPM, which I think is going to be even more fantastic. And thanks to Dan um, as well for coming in and, um, you know, contributing to the community. Uh, that's, that's really awesome. Um, and thanks to the panel, you know, it's, I didn't realize that I coached so many of you, but uh, um, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, you're paying it forward and applying what you've learned um, to, and, you know, making good use of it. So, you know, my hat goes off to you for that. Um, <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to say though, in parting, I was in a uh, call, I was in a meeting this morning and understood that the U S black chamber has, uh, put together a national black directory of uh, businesses. It's called the Buy Black um, Buy Black Business Directory. I think it is. If you look at Buy Black Business Conference that just happened a few days ago, you will get access to the directory. And my advice to you is to register and set your business up to that directory. I understand they're also issuing black business certificate, which are nat national certification as well. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I also know BizHack has a directory. So if you are not in the BizHack directory, then you could also um, ensure that you're, you're, you're part of it. And iCava has a directory or a community or marketplace, if you may. Um, you know, you can also be a part of it. So there are opportunities for you to lean in. Uh, there's really no cost um, when it comes to just being a part of those things. But, um, you know, nothing happens on its own. Like there's got to be some semblance of force behind it. And so, but you know, the, those initial steps are necessary. And so I, I encourage you uh, start there and, you know, just, just keep leaning in. Um, I also, I, I, I hardly like to talk about myself, but I also have a platform which is called Purposely that's designed for purpose-driven brands that are unique and underrepresented. Um, and so it gives an opportunity for, for you to also, if you've got a brand that is really doing uh, the story of impact, if you may, then we can we can actually host you there, and you can support those who are there. Uh, we go further afield in places like Colombia, places like South America, Central Caribbean, and so forth to highlight uh, those businesses that are making difference in, in their world. So those are the the things that I'd share with you, and just keep leading in. Remember, you can have this elephant. You just got to do it one bite at a time. That's a great way to close out our time. Thank you all for your time today. Thank all of the panelists for sharing your knowledge, um, for being so candid about your experience. Uh, thank you, Dan and BizHack for uh, putting this panel together. I'm so grateful that I was able to be here to moderate this discussion today. I learned a lot. Um, and I just want to thank you all for being here with us. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful Black Professionals Month. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Hutch, I look forward to making that announcement with you, my friend. Okay. Thanks for having me. Great Bye -bye. job, everyone. Great job, Janine. Thank Great you. Great job. Thank you. Great job.